Concord University Sports has changed conferences. Coming up, we'll see how it's affecting the athletic department. And we'll have Concord's reaction to the recent gov government shutdown. WMLT News starts right now. Welcome to Concord Concord University News. I'm Rachel Dotson. And I'm Brian Allen. Five Concord University students were arrested during the last week of September. The charges against the three males and two females included sexual assault, unlawful restraint, burglary, and felony conspiracy in three separate incidents occurring in October 2012, May 2013, and August 2013. Two of the students facing sexual assault charges were released on personal recognizance bonds. Concord police are unable to comment on any of these cases since their investigations are still underway. A budget battle recently left a government closed down. Richard Babbage has more on how people on the Campus Beautiful are reacting. Richard? Concord University students shared their thoughts on the national shutdown. Most students were disappointed with the government shutting down, yet did not know quite what it meant. Um, I think it's the people who are in charge of our country not getting what they need to get done and that's affecting us. Other students were worried about the effects it could have on them. With that you look at look at uh, shipping books, uh, any any kind of purchases you'd make online, your important, e your important mail from Concord. I mean I'm getting ready to graduate in December and I'd like to think that my diploma wouldn't have to be a hand pickup. This is the first government shutdown in nearly 17 years. Though this does not mean it is a new experience. The Ronald Reagan administration alone saw a shutdown every year that President Reagan was in office. Back to you guys at the desk. Concord University sports teams joined a new conference this semester. And as Jared Klein reports, things are starting out well. The Mountain Lions started off this season a little different from previous years. Concord joined 12 other schools from West Virginia, Ohio, and Virginia to form the new Intercollegiate Mountain East Conference. The new conference, headquartered in Bridgeport, West Virginia, was officially announced in June 2012 as part of a WEVIAC breakup. Kevin Garrett, the athletic director at Concord, says the conference was formed to create a new level of competition. They wanted to form a, a new conference because uh, they wanted to get together with more like-minded institutions. Uh, that had the same goals and aspirations for their athletic department and their universities to be able to, to increase the competitive nature of, of uh, the institutions and, uh, and be uh, more recognized on a regional and national basis. But not everybody is noticing that big of a difference. Jake Lilly, a linebacker for Concord Football, says it's mostly business as usual. We ain't playing no new teams that's in there in the Mountain East Conference, but it's practically the same as the Weaviac as last year. Whether or not the changes are noticeable, however, Garrett says there's a lot of work that goes into starting a new conference. It's anytime you do something new, there's always yeah. a lot of things you got. We had to go through the NCAA and make sure that we were, uh, you know, had all the paperwork in on a timely basis and uh, made sure everybody was uh, meeting their membership standards. And uh, but it's been it's been a lot of work up to this point. Yeah. Concord has a winning record in the new conference as the Mountain Lions take on Urbana next week. For WMLT News, I'm Jared Klein in Athens. Concord University has undergone many changes over the summer, such as the beginning of the library renovations and the new restaurant wingspan in the music department is no exception. Chad Brown has more. Changes indeed come to the Concord University Music Department this semester, especially with the arrival of the new band director, Dr. David Ball. Dr. Ball is an alum of several notable schools, including Virginia Tech, and is also not entirely new to Concord. Before stepping up as director, he was the instructor for low brass instruments. Ball says the transition from low brass instructor to full-time band director has been overall smooth, but somewhat hectic. It's fun. It's exciting. Uh, but a little stressful at times because you, you feel like you, you are kind of uh, working in quadrant one doing things at the moment. So, so slowly as the semester has progressed, I've gotten away from doing what I have to do to being able to plan ahead. With his new position, and with marching season already in full swing, Dr. Ball has plans for both the remainder of the season and next semester's symphonic band. Homecoming will do a different show because that's you know, shortened for the court. So we'll just do one tune uh, with the dance block at uh, a halftime. And then we'll do a short pregame. Um, it's the 150th 
anniversary of the independence of West Virginia or West Virginia becoming its own state. So we will be doing a show for that and then another show. So, but the, like I said, this fall we'll do a holiday concert, then we'll do a commencement performance, then we're going to do two concerts in the spring, and then we'll do a spring commencement. So far, Dr. Ball is getting good reviews by even senior music majors. One of them, and longtime band member Maddie Jones, confirms this. Dr. Ball is a fantastic person. He was our lower brass instructor last year, and he has, just by individually teaching me, he's taught me so much. And I was really ecstatic when I found out that he was going to be our band director. And the, the energy that he brings to this band and the vibe and the drive and everything that he brings, it brings so much more to the band. And it's completely different than it was last year, the year before. And he makes us work. And I think that's one thing that this band really needed was, you know, a strong fist, you know. With this outlook of the new director, as well as the challenge he brings to the table, it seems that the band has a bright future ahead of it and that they are giving the season their best effort. Reporting for WMLT News, I'm Chad Brown, Athens. Stay tuned. We'll have more WMLT News in just a minute. A new campus organization focuses on students' video game interests. WLNT's Nathan Wilcox has more. One of the more recent clubs on campus created, the Concord Pokemon League, was established with the goal of Pokemon enthusiasts to congregate and participate in the multiplayer portion of the game. Pokemon, also known as Pocket Monsters, has dominated all forms of media for over 20 years. I asked founding member Corey Haynes what he likes most about Pokemon. With the ability to bridge between race and gender gaps, beyond the Pokemon's basic rock-paper-scissors-like mechanics, lies a whole separate competitive strategy game where breeding, choosing the right move, and training is a whole new way to play the game. Once again, I turn to Corey Haynes to see what he hopes the Concord Pokemon League can accomplish. So whether you collect for fun or play for sport, Concord's newly founded Pokemon League is the best place for any trainer to be the best, like no one ever was. This is Nathan Wilcox with WMLT News, Athens, West Virginia. Students at Concord have more to keep them entertained this year. The Student Activities Committee, or SAC, is getting creative with this. Andrew Solgit, the Director of Student Activities, stressed the importance of pleasing all students with campus entertainment. Really, I guess I'm trying to cover as many bases as possible. Students these days have a very uh, diverse set of interests, um, whether it's music, whether it's um, just the activities they participate in. How he chooses the entertainment and events. In the past few weeks, two very different styles of comedians, two heavy metal bands, and a dubstep DJ have put on shows for the campus community. Some upcoming events on campus include Latin dance lessons, a McGee McAdoo performance in the auditorium, and a Shakespeare play. Student activities events seem to be slowing down in the upcoming weeks as fall break is right around the corner for students. For the latest on sports, here's Sarah White. Coaching staffs in the Collegiate World have been taking a serious hit in the past few weeks as the pressure of the season has begun to mount. Two major college teams have fired their head coaches in the past few weeks. The University of Connecticut fired both their head coach, Paul Pasqualani, and their associate coach, George DeLeon, on Monday after losing 41-12 against Buffalo, which brought the Huskies to 0-4 on the season. UConn's offensive coordinator, T.J. Weiss, will be taking over as the interim head coach for the rest of the season. 
The University of Southern California's Lane Kiffin was also fired after losing 62-41 to in a blowout against Arizona State. Kiffin, who was met at the airport by the USC athletic director with the decision, had led them to a 3-2 season overall, but had fallen to 0-2 within the conference. They will be led for the rest of the season by Ed Oregon, the former coach of Ole Miss. The NFL football season continues to progress as the Broncos have taken the top spot within the ESPN Power Rankings, while the Jaguars continue to stay in last place after a rough start to their season. That's all for this week's sports. Back to you at the desk. With entertainment news, here's Chance Razzo. It has been a sad week for all Breaking Bad fans after the series finale that aired on AMC last Sunday, but not all hope is lost as there is still plenty more to come out of the Breaking Bad universe for fans to get excited for. Breaking Bad, the complete series, is an upcoming box set of all the five seasons that is due for release in November. The box set has many exclusive special features and merchandise, including an apron with the emblem of a restaurant featured on the show, a collectible booklet with a letter from the series creator, two hours of never-before-seen footage, and an alternate three-minute ending to the finale. Even more exciting news is that AMC reached a licensing agreement to start a spinoff on this series about the fast-witted, crooked lawyer Saul Goodman, who is portrayed by Bob Odenkirk. The series will be titled Better Call Saul, and it will be a prequel to the events that happened in Breaking Bad. As one great show comes to an end, another great one is just beginning. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which airs on ABC Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m., is a spin-off of the Marvel Cinematic Universe series, which includes the films that make up the Avengers. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. takes place after the events in Avengers film and follows a super-secret S.H.I.E.L.D. agency led by Agent Coulson, who is portrayed by Clark Gregg, as they investigate superhero and extraterrestrial activity. That's all for entertainment this week. Back to you at the desk. Princeton continues their downtown revelation program with this year's Autumn Fest. Brian, you went to the event. How was it? It was a lot of fun. I had a really good time. Here's my report. Mercer Street in downtown Princeton was crowded with people, food, and music for Autumn Fest. Over 100 vendors and information booths lined the streets, offering a variety of products and diversions to children and adults, making it the biggest festival so far. The city stage featured several musical acts. There were also contests, including a car show, a pumpkin hiding contest, and a best beard contest. Getting ready to uh, enter and win a uh, pumpkin pie eating contest, so that'll be a blast. Have you done a lot of pumpkin eating? Uh, no, never. I mean, I've never entered a pie eating contest, so hopefully it goes well. During the weekend leading up to the festival, the Autumn Fest pageant was held at the Chuck Mathena Center, where a queen and team queen for the festival are selected. Well, this is my first time coming here, so um, I've had a great experience so far. We got to go and judge the dog show this morning, which was a lot of fun, and I just got to try some of the food, which is always a great experience. So I'm looking forward to enjoying the festival for the rest of the day. Well, I grew up here, so I come almost every year, and it's just a great experience to be walking around and representing my community. Year. The Princeton Autumn Fest is a yearly event sponsored by the Princeton Mercer County Chamber of Commerce. It's held on Mercer Street in the heart of downtown, which has a reputation for drug activity and prostitution. Good planning and good weather help make the festival a success. It's also an opportunity to refocus the downtown area. The initiative of the state of West Virginia uh, is trying to get the downtowns re revitalized and uh, we're doing the same thing here in Princeton. So an event like this you know, especially we, we, we made some changes down there. We put some uh, murals up on buildings that didn't have it. Uh, uh, we're, we're getting ready to put some benches and things like that. When people uh, have that, uh, see the changes that's been made, then hopefully in the, in the future they'll, they'll come down here. Autumn Fest is scheduled during the last week of September and is free to the public Thank to you. attend. WMLT News, I'm Brian Allen in Princeton. That's it for WMLT News. I'm Brian Allen. And I'm Rachel Dotson. Tune in again in two weeks.